of you all want to get on the track, right? So you probably want me to talk less. So I'll do my best. So I'm going to give you a bit of a product planning perspective. We have an engineering perspective, good perspective for Mr. Wang on the really the inspiration behind our end division, our high performance division. And I'll give you a little product planning perspective. And we'll talk about our customers in the market. But first we'll just uh, wind up with uh, what we've been doing in the motorsports side. You know, when you develop a car that has a strong performance credential, you also have to prove it. And so we want to make sure that our motorsports activities help prove out the car and not just us talking about it, but let uh, the car perform on its own on the racetrack. So we were able to win uh, seven out of 12 races in the 12 event series this year. That was against uh, uh, Civic uh, R spec. That was against uh, G Volkswagen GTI, against Alfa Romeo and others. So it was against a strong crowd. So I think we can say that we've done, we've been very fortunate. We've done well with uh, Brian Hurd and his team. Uh, this weekend, we're gonna be at Laguna Seca for the eight hours of Laguna Seca. Uh, and uh, Michael Lewis and Mark Wilkins will be piloting one car. And uh, uh, Brian Herta and his son Colton, his young son Colton, will be piloting the second car this weekend at the uh, at, uh, Laguna Seca, the eight hours of Laguna Seca. And uh, uh, Colton was uh, a runner-up in this year's uh, 2018 Indy Lights, so uh, young driver, but he's, he's coming up quickly. And it's the second time Brian and, uh, and his son Colton have teamed up. They were uh, last teamed up two years ago here on this track at the 24 Hours of Thunderhill, if you, many of you may have uh, recall that. So it'll be a great weekend coming up to again uh, show what the Veloster, I'm uh, sorry, in this case, the I-30N can do. So you probably all wonder why another Veloster? Some of you were at our Veloster events in Austin, but you're probably wondering, you know, why, why not spend our effort and our time on another SUV? Everybody wants SUVs, right? Well, when we thought of the original Veloster, it was all about the idea of a reverse halo. You know, typically a halo car, you know, a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, you buy them, they're a lot of money, and you park them in your garage, you admire them, you very seldom drive them, you don't want to scratch them. Uh, we thought of a reverse halo. We wanted a car that at the very bottom of our lineup that would bring young, new buyers into our brand and get them excited about our brand, emotionally attached to our brand. So it wasn't about a car you put in your uh, garage with a nice polished floor and admire once in a while. It was about a car that everybody can afford and drive home and drive to work every day and really enjoy it. So it was about building our brand from the bottom up instead of from the top down. So when you think about how we did with that first generation of car, uh, half, over half of the people that, that bought that Veloster never considered Hyundai before, more than half. 70% uh, of them were Conquest buyers, meaning in RO Polk language, that means that they had another car they purchased new that was a non-Hyundai product. So uh, in the beginning when we were selling that car, over 70% of those buyers traded in a non-Hyundai product to buy the Veloster. Uh, the buyers were over six years younger than our typical buyer, uh, which is a lot in product planning terms. Uh, their income was over $7,000 uh, higher per year, their family income, which is again is a lot when you consider the wide range of buyers that we get. Uh, and then when you think about when they came back to market, was it successful in doing what we'd hoped to do, bringing new people to Hyundai brand? Well, about 45% of them replaced their Veloster when they came time to buy a new one with another Hyundai product which is quite good. If you look at Camaro and Mustang, for example, it's actually better than those cars. So it has a good record in terms of not only bringing in a lot of pleasure in the ownership of a, a new vehicle, but also it brought them back to our store to buy another one as their family situation changes. So for me, this has been a very exciting program. From the very earliest stages when we were driving early cars, what's impressed me about uh, Albert's team, his high performance team, is one simple thing that we've all, in this room, we've all driven a high-performance car a time or two. And one thing we all could agree on is that many of those cars have tremendous performance potential, but you have to be a fabulous driver to achieve that potential. The whole idea of this car from the beginning was to make an average driver feel like an expert. The uh, performance of this car is so accessible, and from the very earliest stages driving this car, I was so impressed with how much of the performance you can extract from this car from the very beginning you can get to nine cents so quickly. You don't have to be a great driver to get to it. And I think you'll experience that today. And that was, to me, really the most impressive part of this activity is how to make performance accessible just to average folks that want to experience spirited and high performance driving, not just on the track, but around town as well. So when you talk about the product itself, we gave it a very unique front look. We gave it a very aggressive front fascia. 
a very unique real execution. Of course, the signature uh, red line uh, attitude that we gave this car just for the N line and the N, uh, uh, the N model performance vehicles. So you always see that red accent as a, a key feature identifying the N performance vehicles. On the rear, we gave it a wholly unique rear fascia, a very large diameter exhaust outlets. We gave it a two-stage rear spoiler with a high-mounted stoplight integrated into that spoiler to give it a nice, unique, and high-performance look. In, in, in terms of the interior, gave it a very exclusive steering wheel, nice grip, a nice diameter, a good thickness. You'll feel that today. Uh, more aggressive seat bolstering, so it really holds you in the seat when you're going around those corners here on the track. And a sequential gear uh, shift light indicator in the line of sight. It's on the upper left-hand side of the screen here. You can see how it works. And you'll be able to experience that today when you're on the track and the street as well. So when you think about how it compares to other products, the things that really pop out, two things. One is height. So this vehicle is significantly lower than its competitors, the Golf, uh, GTI, the Focus ST, and the Civic Type R. And that'll become a clear why that's important in just a moment. The other thing that's clear is that we are able to achieve a lighter weight by having a lower roof as well. So it's not only about using high strength steel and aerospace adhesives and laser welding and other things that give us the stiff body Albert was talking about, but it's also, we just have less glass and steel than some of our competitors, so we're able to achieve a little bit lower weight by, doing, by selecting a body design that gives us a bit of a lower overall height. And how does that translate in terms of potential in terms of dynamics. So when you look at roll inertia, we're substantially better than the I-30N. And just to back up a little bit, as a product planner, we thought, well, gee, we could just take our Elantra GT, which is the I-30N in Europe. Why don't we just sell the same car that's being sold in Europe? Why don't we just sell the I-30N and not the Veloster? We could have done that because we're selling the Elantra GT, which is, of course, the I-30N, uh, or the I-30 in Europe. And of course, we have the Veloster here. But we chose the Veloster for a number of good reasons. And here's one of them. When you look at the potential based on body performance, the roll inertia is significantly better than the I-30. Uh, the pitch inertia, much better at 194 uh, kilogram meter squared. And then the yaw inertia, also much better at 196 than the I-30. So that lower body, less glass and less steel, translate into a vehicle that can adapt more quickly to uh, surface changes on the, on the road. It can also settle more quickly when you're setting that car up in a turn, when you're car braking, car turning. The car will settle quicker because it has less inertia to have to accommodate. So it basically gives you the potential for more stability in any kind of a turning or elevation change maneuvering. So potentially, when you look at these numbers, it gives you more to work with compared to a taller hot hatch basic design. So let's talk about standard equipment for a moment. So we offer a standard Infinity Premium Audio with an 8-inch display, uh, display audio, standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, a standard Blue Link Connected Care for three years, a standard proximity key with push button start, and standard automatic HVAC, all standard in this car. Uh, when you think about what's available in terms of packages, so you can see on the right hand, I'm sorry, on the left hand side, uh, we have the standard pack that I just mentioned a few items from. So that standard pack comes with a 2-liter, 250-horsepower tuning level, uh, six-speed manual, electronically controlled suspension that Albert talks so much about, a very sophisticated, a rack-mounted, motor-driven power steering system that's standard for both the performance pack and standard trim. It comes with 18-inch wheel standard, LED headlamps and tail lamps, and then the sports seats, the high-bolster sports seats I had mentioned, and of course a number of other things. The performance pack adds to that uh, better tuning for the powertrain that can deliver 275 horsepower. The end corner carving differential, the limit slip uh, electronic control differential that Albert spoke about. And now we jump up to 19 inch wheels and we have larger rotors, both front and rear, for the performance pack. Of course, our signature color is our N blue with red accents. Uh, we also offer a racing red, truck white, and phantom black. Remember, we want to match uh, the satisfaction of configurability, meaning when I go on the internet and configure that product, I want to match that to availability. And because this will be a lower volume product, we, don't want, to, we want to make sure that the customers can find the cars as they configure it 
on H.com or any other site, KDB.com or otherwise. Uh, we want to make sure they can find the vehicle that they can figure. So we've made it simple for the customer. Two packages, four colors. Albert talked a lot about tires. So the standard uh, pack comes with an 18-inch uh, Michelin Pilot Super Sport summer tire. And of course, the uh, performance pack then jumps to a 19-inch uh, 235-35 Pirelli P0 summer tire. And as Albert mentioned, we also have a dealer option through our dealer tire program, uh, the Pirelli Trophio R Streetable Competition Tire. And there's two of those out there today. And of course, all the cars out there will be either the 19-inch uh, Pirelli P0s or the two Pirelli Trophio R tires. So there's two of those cars. The rest of them are the 19-inch Pirelli P0s. And they're all performance pack cars. So Albert talked a lot about a key engineering objective of this program. How do we build a car that's exciting, that's trackable, that's uh, exhilarating performance, and is affordable for an average wallet? So the estimated base price of the Veloster N will be 28,000 with freight, under 28,000. That's our target. We'll, we should be announcing it very soon, within a week or two. But uh, we're targeting under 28,000 as a starting price for this car, and that's as you saw it listed on the page two, two pages ago. Now the performance pack gets you in under 30 with freight. So an under $30,000 car with all the performance that Albert spoke so highly of just a few minutes ago, uh, under $30,000, that's an affordable performance car. I think we could all agree. So just in quick summary, our performance pack car delivers 275 horsepower through that two liter powertrain that was spoken about earlier and corner carving differential, electronically controlled suspension, and grin con control drive modes that allows the driver to select the level of excitement they want. And remember, the key direction for this car was to make it equally exciting, the most exciting car in your garage. So that's the car you're gonna go to every day to go to work or to go run errands. And it's also the car you could take to the track. An affordable car that's for everyday driving, great everyday driving and great uh, potential for the track as well. Uh, and also, finally, variable exhaust. Thank <laughs> you.